Hi, I'm Amy Reed. Welcome to Bookham. Today I'm going to talk about um, my series, the Malice series, which came out a couple of years ago. And I'm going to talk about a book I'm reading for a book club right now. And I'm going to talk about a new craft that I've gotten really interested in that I'd like to show you. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to talk about today was my Malice series, which is actually the first series I wrote. And it is uh, three books, all taking place um, in the United Kingdom. The first one is called The House on Candlewick Lane. The second one is called Highland Peril. And the third one is called Murder in Thistlecross. For the most part, they take place in Scotland, though Murder, Murder in Thistlecross uh, takes place in Wales, mostly. Um, the story follows three members of the same family. That Each book has a different main character, but they're all members of the same family. And uh, each book can be read as a standalone, Those are, though there's an overarching sort of family story, and there are references to the other books as, as I move through the series. Um, the House on Candlewick Lane is about uh, Dr. Greer, Do Greer Dobbins, who is a Scottish woman working in the United States as a professor of art history in Massachusetts. She and her, and her husband, Neil, who is also uh, a Scottish, have moved to the United States for a period uh, in order to work here. And early on, very early on in the book, the reader learns that their five-year-old daughter, Ellie, has been kidnapped. And the reader also learns very early on who the kidnapper is. Um, it's a family kidnapping. So Greer has to hop a plane to Edinburgh to find the daughter. So the book really is about the mother's search for her daughter, but in doing so, she has to deal with Neil, and did I say he's her ex-husband? He's her ex-husband. I don't know if I said husband or ex-husband, but anyway, she has to face Neil's family, and they are a scary group of people, and they live um, in a house that gives Greer nightmares for a very particular reason. Um, and she needs to get through that in order to find her daughter. The second book, Highland Peril, um, features Greer's sister, Sylvie. And Sylvie has moved from Edinburgh to the Highlands of Scotland with her husband. And this is the first book I... I I will interrupt myself to say my husband has read all my books. That is his favorite one, Highland Peril. And I really shouldn't say that I have a favorite, but that's pretty high up there on my list also. Highland Peril uh, is the first book that I wrote where I bring a true story that happened far in the past and bring it up into the present and, and build a mystery around th that event. What happened in, in Scottish history in the 1650s was there's a there's a place in in Scotland called Castle Dunatar and during the war between Scotland and England that took place at that time there was uh, a caretaker of Castle Dunatar who was entrusted with the uh, crown jewels of Scotland and the crown jewels of Scotland were kept in that castle and they consisted of a crown and the scepter of Scotland and the sword of Scotland. And as Oliver Cromwell's troops were approaching the castle, the caretaker of the castle threw, well, somehow got the, got the crown jewels of Scotland outside and a woman who had been waiting outside took them and hid them under a floorboard of a church uh, nearby until the war was over. And, and then at that point, the, the crown jewels of Scotland were restored to their original um, glory and to, to a safe place. So I took that story and thought, what if there had been someone helping the the woman who hid the jewels and what if that helper could not be trusted 
And so I built the story from there and brought it into the uh, present time with uh, a mystery in the present that's tied very closely to the what if that I imagined from the past. Um, I know that's pretty cryptic, but I don't want to give any of it away in case you're going to read the book, and I hope you will. It's it's It was a fun book to write, and I, I know a lot of people um, have enjoyed the book. Uh, the third book is called Murder and Thistlecross, and that one features the cousin of Greer and Sylvie, and her name is Ailey, and Ailey becomes the uh, house manager sort of, uh, yeah, I would call her a house manager of a 15th century Norman castle in Wales that is currently occupied by a very small family. It's actually just one woman and a small staff. And in that story, the family of the woman is coming to visit. And it's a highly dysfunctional family. And as they start to arrive, it's three sons and two of them have brought their wives with them and as the story goes on there are some very uh, explosive secrets that come out and there's a murder and Greer, not Greer, um, Ailey takes it upon herself to help the mistress of the castle who is her boss and who is a very kind woman um, help her get through this and and in order to do so she has to figure out what is going on with these three brothers so it was a fun series to write i hope you'll check it out it's gotten some great reviews on amazon and next i am going to show you a new craft that i've gotten interested in and i it's it's fun and i'm at the very beginning stages but i'd like to share it with you so hold on for this section of Bookum, I wanted to show you a craft that I have just started doing. And when I say just started, I just started, like four days ago. So, it's called quilling, and it is, it's described as like a paper filigree craft. And I use, it, it's, it essentially involves taking very thin strips of paper. I use strips that are one eighth of an inch thick. Um, and you coil them around a quilling pen and you use the resulting coils in different shapes that you manipulate with your fingers um, or other <clears throat> or other instruments or other tools to make different shapes and those shapes all come together to make a piece of artwork so this is what a quilling pen looks like you can see I'm new at this like I said so I don't know what this end is for this end has you can maybe see if I hold it up you can see it's slotted it has a little slot and you put the paper the end of the paper through the slot like so and you bring it right up to the end whoops not that close and then you use one hand to roll the quilling pen while you use the thumb and forefinger of your other hand to guide the piece of paper and then you're gonna tightly coil it and then I'll show you what happens next. Now, Bibiana and I were talking about uh, quilling. We were texting back and forth about it while we um, spoke about this, this particular show, this episode. And I was telling her that I've just started this quilling and she looked it up. I didn't know too much about it, too much about the history of it. Um, so she looked it up and found that one of the theories of the origin of quilling goes back to the 15th century in France and in Italy where nuns would use the, um, the art of quilling to decorate religious artwork and religious objects without, without the cost associated with a lot of other types of decoration. So you see I've rolled this up. I don't know if you can see it. And then there's a, a, I don't even know what this thing is called, but anyways, you put, you put the, the coil that you've made inside one of the holes and the coil expands to fit that size of the hole that you want. So then next I 
I take a pair of tweezers and I'm just gonna grab the circle like so and I'm going to take a glue it's got a very tiny tiny point and I'm gonna put just a drop of glue right there and I'm gonna hold it shut and then I'm gonna put it back in the 14 hole that it was in until it dries it dries it dries pretty quickly so here are I've made I've made some white made a teardrop shape these are like an off-white I made an orange um, circle I made a yellow teardrop my daughter's birthday was earlier this week so I started this project what I think I started it Monday so her birthday was Monday so Monday night I gave her a little card that I had made with the flowers um, so the teardrop shapes and the little the little circular circular shapes and then this is probably not totally dry but I'm going to show you anyways so you take this out of here like so like this and then you want to so you want to make a teardrop shape, you're just going to pinch one end of it, like that. And then you've got yourself a little teardrop shaped there. Is that better? Is that easier to see? A teardrop shaped little piece of paper. I've seen, um, I've seen them where both ends are squeezed, so it's more like, a, like an oval, like an almond shape almost. And I've seen uh, binder clips used to really hold it, hold it tight, hold it closed tightly together. Um, if you look up quilling, I don't have any quilling books. I can't show you any pictures um, other than the card I just showed you. But today is my birthday, so I'm hoping to get some quilling books for my birthday. So um, since I can't show you any quilling books, at least yet, I would suggest that you Google quilling, look up images, and you will see really amazing, magnificent uh, pieces of paper art um, that all come, that all start with these little strips of paper. So the reason I'm talking about this is um, because as writers and as creative people, we, I think, sometimes get stuck. Some people call it writer's block. Some people just call it hitting a wall some people call it other things um, and studies have shown that when you can take a step back when you can maybe focus on something else for a while your mind is still working your your mind is still working through those plot points working through a character issue that you might have and and what a lot of people find is that when they go back to work after after taking a break, after stepping back and, and doing something um, different, that that plot point is starting to crystallize, or the uh, the hole is filled in, or your character problem is solved. Um, and I like to do stuff like this. I like to do artwork. I like to do crafts. This this is one thing. I'm working on it's a kind of cross stitch it's a mess right now you can see but it's a gift I promised to my sister literally 10 years ago for Christmas and I'm I'm promising myself that it's gonna be done this year um, the other I love to color this is let's see this is a folk art book that I've colored I think I've only colored one page and this is it um, but I love it and I don't want to call it mindless because I think your mind is still working when you're doing this, but it's a different part of your mind that's working. And this keeps you, this gives you something else to focus on where you're thinking of just what's in front of you. You're not thinking of that plot point. You're not thinking about your character problem. Um, you're just thinking about the next coil or the next stitch or what color you're going to use next. Um, and it's, it's such a relaxing thing to do. Um, I encourage you to, to try something. Let me know in the comments below, you know, what you do. Do you exercise? Do you knit? Do you crochet? Do you cook? Bibiana was saying she likes to make bread. It's really, um, uh, a very hands-on activity like a craft is and 
it helps you get out of your own mind a little bit. Um, let me know. You know, tell me what you do. Tell me what you do for to, to get away from the the problems that you have in your work. And I'll talk about Untamed next. Thanks. One of the things I've been doing lately is listening to a book on CD, which I don't normally do, but I have really loved this one. It's called Untamed by Glennon Doyle. She is a New York Times bestselling author of uh, Love Warrior and what is it? Come uh, Carry On Warrior, uh, neither of which I have to confess I've read. Um, I had some reservations about this book only because I prefer to read um, a book in print rather than listening, but this book is narrated by the author and there's something really powerful about listening to this book in the author's own voice using her own words. Um, it's a story about becoming brave and being a woman, particularly in the United States and but, but not necessarily the United States. Um, universal truths that women uh, are taught from a very, very young age, if not from in utero. Um, and it's, it's a really eye-opening book that makes you think very deeply about culture and what we're taught as children, both boys and girls. Um, Glennon Doyle herself was a woman who was married to a man. They had three children together and eventually she left him and married another woman instead. And it, it is just a fascinating look at her thought processes and her own struggles to overcome things she's gone through in her life, such as addiction to alcohol and drugs and bulimia and crippling indecision about lots of, lots of decisions, little decisions, big decisions, and how she built herself into somebody who is absolutely, maybe not unafraid, but very brave and who is true to herself and the voice inside her and the book talks about how she how she got the courage to start to listen to that voice and how she got the courage to move forward um, making decisions that come from her heart not from the opinions of other people um, I'm not even done with it yet it's a seven CD uh, uh, book and I've only listened to the first five and I really love it. This is for a second book club that I think I'm going to be joining. And I know that's that's the first book that they're going to be reading. So um, I did want to I did want to listen to it. I find that uh, listening to it really allows me to uh, take in and absorb what the author is saying, but I can get other things done at the same time, which is which is pretty nice, which you obviously can't do when you're reading either an ebook or a paperback or a hardcover. Um, this is a book I would highly recommend. Again, it's Untamed by Glennon Doyle. And I've been thinking a lot about whether, how, how I would react if I were friends with her. And I think it would just be an incredible experience to know her in person. Um, but maybe kind of scary. I think, I think she brings out um, ideas in people that that are kind of scary, and she asks you to confront your own fears and and start to to really use your imagination to dream about what the very best and most beautiful version of yourself would look like and your life. And I I, I can't say it's. A, it's it's a book exclusively for women, but I could see how it would have a, a very powerful impact, more so on a woman than on a man, I think. But I certainly would recommend it to both women and men. Um, again, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. I do think you should check it out, and I think you'll like it. So plan to plan to spend some time with it and and really start thinking about about the questions she's raising in this book.
Hi, I'm Veronica. Just book them. I'm Amy. Let's book them. Hey, this is Viviana. Just book them.